Veterans Legacy Program. Creates partnerships with universities across the country, currently with nine. Um, uh, our partnership here with UC Riverside is one of our largest and one of our most dynamic. The, the depth of the team is just, it's, it's unparalleled. And the kind of interest and work and connection between campus and K-12 and community back to the cemetery, I think is gonna raise the bar for all future Veterans Legacy Program partnerships. And so you've been working all on your great-grandpa, right? Yes. We find that in a lot of American communities that a lot of young people don't know about veterans and you know, people in their community from those older generations. And so to be able to see faculty members teach undergraduates how to do that kind of research, to, to give life back to those stories and to give, them, to give these veterans their voice back. What could be more exciting than a cemetery? I mean, that sounds kind of maybe gruesome, but, but this is the human history right here. All of these different people who have different stories. And working with, with young kids in high school and, and middle school and getting them interested in the past and in history and who our families were and why are we here in, in California. The bridging that we're doing between the university and the city of Riverside and then more broadly to the families and to their extended relatives, I think it gives a sense of the public nature of writing and at the same time the kind of real impact and effect that storytelling can have. It was a six-week process, um, and graduate fellows met with a mentor and also a group of two to three other graduate students, and collaborating and coming up with individual lesson plans for our classrooms. Watching the students see that this was a lot bigger than just your everyday assignment, it was a very emotional experience trying to put, trying to put yourself in the shoes of somebody like you in a different time. The first week we really focused on learning more about the research process and going through different archives. Second week began the writing process, um, so students took that archival research that they did and then put that into writing. Um, and students definitely had a choice of what type of writing they wanted to do. Um, so some of my students decided to do poetry or creative nonfiction pieces. Some students opted to do something that was more traditional of a biography. It was really great to see see them, their creative minds open up. Most of students wanted to do oral readings of their stories. Some students wanted to uh, create dance music and voice. I think it's like so wonderful that we had the opportunity to do that with the students. One of the things that I see as a strength of this project is that it involves so many people. Of course, the University of California, Riverside, Riverside National Cemetery, various regional school districts, but then also institutions in terms of where people come from, you know, ethnically, religiously. So working with graduate fellows, I got to witness them in the classroom, mostly, and saw what they did with their lesson plans and the way that they got the students excited about the stories. And that was really great. You could see they were really invested in the stories of, of these people with, with whom they have very little in common in terms of age and experience. About 600 students in our student body have had the opportunity to go through this program. They may not remember half of the things that I teach them, but if they could be touched personally by a service member's life and really understand that they are full people, not just somebody that went and served our country honorably, but to see that they lived these amazing, well-rounded lives as well as fought bravely for our country. My favorite part was watching my graduate students show younger kids, especially junior high kids, how do you make a story out of something that happened to your grandfather? How does that story belong to you? And then what did you feel? School kids in this area can actually go to the cemetery and say, this is my grandfather, but could wander to a different spot and say, oh look, here's Smiley Viegas, who got the National Medal of Honor, and he's from Riverside. someone who was just, you know, at the cemetery, has this app up and has pulled up this biography. Is this engaging me? Is it interesting me? What would I want to read? And keeping that I in had mind. the honor of researching John Richard Dolly. Um, I'm researching about my grandpa, Grandpa Bob. And I'm working on the story of Chris P. Ruiz. I did my story on Margaret Helen Powers. I researched Lawrence Shannon Falls. 
And the person I'm working with is Dennis Ray Bailey. Um, my soldier is Charles Francis Young. He was in the U.S. Um, Army and was a major sergeant in the Battle of the Bulge. A very honorable man who served in three different wars. And he loved being outdoors, fish, fishing and camping. And he was really passionate about his job because he loved helping others. And he really loved animals as well. During the war, she managed to gain up to the rank of corporal, and she sh and she served in World War II. I learned that he liked many things that I like to do. And he's actually a really nice family friend, and we all miss him a lot. And right now, he has five grandchildren and six great-grandchildren, including myself. We can never forget that this cemetery is on the land of native people. To me at least, even though I'm not from one of these tribes out here, to see what they're doing out there and the respect and the reverence they have. Last year there was an elder, an Apache elder from uh, our community out here who passed away. I was really moved by the whole thing. I guess I never really understood what goes on there. I still think about it quite a bit, you know, so I think it's the sacred work that they do, you know, and uh, the work that Lori Siskwak, for example, is doing out there at Sherman Indian High School, it's, it's a healing work, and uh, it keeps students grounded to who they are and provides a foundation for them to be in the academic world but still stay connected to their traditional culture. This digitizing project has really made it great, and I, I think it's really going to be helpful with this project on the veterans, you know. When they were in the, the trenches in the war, um, they would sing the school song, and they would know, he said, that our classmates were back here praying for us and thinking of us, and I always thought of that. These men w were a very, very important part of our history and, and of me continuing the work here that I try to do. I've been here for 27 years. I'm of Wyandotte descent, and I am involved with the Sherman Indian High School and through the museum. For many years, I've been working out there and have had a relationship with the uh, students and the, uh, the faculty, the staff. And so I wanted to not just be an egghead here at the university, but be out within the communities and learning and growing from them. I've had this relationship for years and I make sure that my students have this relationship as well. I've been interning at Sherman Indian Museum for three years and I have worked during that time to start a digitization project to protect our extremely fragile, vulnerable, but unique documents. Out of that project, the Veterans Project is helpful to the museum because for a long time we've tried to identify all of the students from World War I on that have served. So one of the things um, that is important in I think most Native tribes is veterans. It's important to our community to honor them and respect them the way they should be. I am very excited to see uh, current students at Sherman be able to go through the photographs, through the documents, and making a lot of personal connections. And some of them were family. They identified uh, their last names or the clan name. And I think it's also about uh, giving voice uh, to the people that are no longer here today and be able to honor them. And I think to be able to do that as a Native student at Sherman, for a Native veteran, I think is a really profound statement and a project for the students. I have a friend who's in the Riverside National Cemetery. They all have stories and it's important to know them, not just as people who are servicemen and women, but as people who are your next door neighbors and to hear their story. That's why I'm involved. He definitely was very special to my family, so it was an honor to get to be able to write this about him for my family and for people to know him. It's teaching everyone about um, history as being not just 
documents that are put in an archive and closed up, but part of a living story. I feel like if you have a family member, even if you don't have a family member, you can, you can learn things about the soldiers and the men that fought in war and what they had to go through. John Whitehead had completed his service as the rank of a captain in World War II. He was a Tuskegee Airman. Not only did he battle in the war, but outside of it as well, having to go through the racism. I believe in the value of doing community-based history. I think it helps communities build their own narratives. It's empowering in a personal level and also as a community. I like how you put your own voice into those facts. It was really cool seeing it all put together and I read it to the class and seeing all the good feedback I got on it. I didn't know that poetry could be associated with research, but now I know. <laughs> I imagine my great-grandfather laughing in a field dotted with clovers and yellow dandelions. He was with his five children and his wife. Students are actually getting out into their community, learning about people within their community, and they're creating relevant work that will be seen by people in their community as well. Really, my entire career as an adult, ever since getting out of the Army, um, has been to just create new opportunities for young people to surprise themselves, to become the agents of their own learning. I think Along the Chaparral is one of the most valuable things I've ever done at UCR, because what it does is let us go into the community. Seeing my graduate students go into the school that my daughter went to, Central Junior High, right around the corner from here, and talk about people at Riverside National Cemetery, that's, I think, the most valuable thing about a project like Along the Chaparral, is our ability to use narrative and storytelling to make ourselves into better humans. The cemetery is a trove of history and a huge part of our community. I imagined him risking his life, grabbing a wounded friend laying on the ground, hearing gun blasts echoing through the battlefield and his eardrums the smell of sulfuric gunpowder invading his nostrils, the sound of ear-splitting screams dimming his senses, making his knees buckle under the weight of the wounded friend. That doesn't stop him. 